in a world where the unexpected looms at every corner. The significance of disaster preparedness cannot be overstated. It serves as a beacon of hope and resilience in the face of the unpredictable wrath of nature or man-made calamities. The essence of being well-prepared lies in understanding the unpredictable nature of disasters. They strike without warning, transforming ordinary days into scenarios of survival and recovery. Amidst this uncertainty, there exists the concept of danger zones, areas that are particularly vulnerable or become exceedingly hazardous in times of disaster. These zones, often marked by their geographical, architectural, or societal characteristics, require heightened awareness and avoidance during such times to safeguard lives and properties. Uh, avoid these 10 places when disaster strikes emerges as a crucial video in navigating the precarious path of disaster response. This introduction sets the stage for a deep dive into identifying and understanding these high risk areas. You know, aims to arm individuals with the knowledge needed to make informed decisions when faced with the daunting task of seeking safety amidst chaos. By highlighting the importance of steering clear of these danger zones, the video seeks not only to educate, but also to empower readers fostering a culture of preparedness and resilience against the face of adversities that lie beyond our control. 10. Uh, uh, in the tumultuous aftermath of a disaster, healthcare facilities, especially overcrowded hospitals and clinics, swiftly transform into danger zones. The propensity for these institutions to become overwhelmed during mass casualty events is not only high, but also inevitable in many scenarios. This Overcrowding can significantly impede the facility's ability to provide timely and efficient care, potentially putting more lives at risk due to delayed treatments and the spread of infectious diseases in tightly packed settings. The image of a hospital as a sanctuary of healing becomes paradoxically inverted in such times, underscoring the critical need for alternative care strength. Understanding when to seek medical attention becomes paramount in disaster-stricken areas. Minor injuries and non-life-threatening conditions might be better dealt with away from overburdened hospitals. This consideration helps to alleviate the pressure on medical facilities, ensuring that those in dire need of urgent care receive it promptly. It's vital for individuals and families to recognize early signs of medical distress and evaluate the severity of their condition before deciding to head to the hospital. Exploring alternative care options is equally crucial. Mobile medical units, temporary clinics set up by relief organizations, telemedicine services, and first aid administered by trained volunteers stand out as viable alternatives during disasters. These resources often provide sufficient care for less severe conditions, freeing up emergency services and hospital space for critical cases. Additionally, personal preparedness, including basic first aid knowledge and having a well-stocked medical kit, uh, can make a significant difference in managing minor health issues until the situation stabilizes. Fun. In the labyrinth of urban sprawl, its ongoing development, unstable structures and construction sites emerge as significant hazards, more so in the context of disasters. These areas characterized by their vulnerability due to incomplete construction, exposed materials and temporary supports can become perilous traps for the unwary. The integrity of such structures is often compromised during natural calamities like earthquakes, floods or high winds, making them potent danger zones that demand caution and avoidance. Identifying these risks in everyday life necessitates uh, keen awareness of one's surroundings. Construction sites are typically marked by visible signs indicating ongoing work, but the subtler signs of structural instability in buildings such as cracks in walls, sagging roofs, or loose debris might not be as immediately apparent. Being cognizant of these indicators is crucial, especially in disaster-prone areas where the likelihood of encountering such hazards is higher. Avoidance of these danger zones during disasters requires both pre-disaster preparedness and immediate action when a crisis unfolds. Staying informed about local construction projects and areas with known structural vulnerabilities allows individuals to plan safer routes and make informed decisions in emergencies. Local government and disaster response agencies often provide resources and warnings about high-risk zones, which can be invaluable for planning purposes. In the throes of a disaster, the imperative to steer clear of these areas cannot be overstated. Unstable structures and construction sites not only pose a direct risk of collapse, but also may harbor other dangers such as gas leaks, electrical hazards, and falling debris. Prioritizing routes that avoid these areas when seeking shelter or evacuating can significantly reduce the risk of injury or worse. Eight, large public gatherings such as concerts and sports events, while sources of immense joy and community celebration can quickly turn into perilous danger zones in the event of a disaster. 
the very essence of these gatherings, their scale and density, makes them vulnerable to crowd control issues and the devastating risk of stampedes. Such scenarios often stem from panic, confusion, or sudden uncontrolled movements of large numbers of people, making it imperative to understand personal safety and situational awareness in these environments. By key to navigating the potential dangers of large public gatherings lies in proactive preparation and maintaining a high level of situational awareness. Before attending any large event, familiarize yourself with the venue's layout, noting all possible exits and identifying less crowded pathways for evacuation. Just upon arrival, take a moment to reassess and locate these exits again, keeping in mind that the situation and accessible routes may change during an emergency. Personal safety tips for attendees uh, extend beyond mere spatial awareness. It involves staying vigilant, avoiding the center of large crowds and keeping close to the edges of the gathering where there is a higher chance of moving freely if needed. In moments of potential crisis, resist the urge to run or move against the flow of the crowd as this can increase the risk of falls and injuries. Instead, maintain a steady pace, moving diagonally towards safety whenever possible. Another critical aspect of safety in public gatherings is communication. Ensure your mobile device is charged and you have established a meetup point with your companions in case you get separated. This simple step can prevent the added danger of searching through a chaotic crowd during or after an incident. Seven major transportation hubs, including airports and train stations, stand as vital nodes in the network of global and local movement. However, in times of disaster, these hubs can quickly metamorphose into epicenters of chaos and congestion. Their role as critical junctures for mass transit not only makes them susceptible to overcrowding, but also complicates evacuation and rescue operations. The confluence of individuals seeking to leave an affected area can generate a level of disorder that significantly hampers the efficiency of emergency response efforts and the safety of those present. The recognition of transportation hubs as potential danger zones underscores the importance of exploring alternate transportation options well in advance. Having a contingency plan that includes alternative routes and modes of transport can be a lifesaver. This might mean considering less obvious exit points from a city such as minor roads or even relying on bicycles or footpaths in extreme situations. Familiarity with the local geography and having up-to-date maps, digital or paper can facilitate this process, enabling individuals to bypass congested major hubs and minimize their exposure to risk. Equally crucial is the imperative to stay informed through reliable sources. In the age of instant communication, real-time updates about the status of transportation systems, roads, and safety advisories are often available through official channels, including government agencies, transport authorities, and news outlets. Uh, subscribing to alert services or using dedicated apps can provide timely notifications that aid uh, in making informed decisions about when and how to move. Six. Crowded urban centers represent a unique set of challenges during emergencies where the density of the population significantly complicates evacuation efforts and access to essential services. In such environments, the sheer volume of people trying to move in different directions can lead to bottlenecks and delays, exacerbating the situation and increasing the risk of harm. The infrastructure of these areas, often a complex web of streets, buildings, and public spaces, can further hinder escape and rescue operations, making it critical for individuals to have a well thought out plan of action. Navigating crowded urban centers during emergencies requires a blend of preparedness and adaptability. One of the primary pieces of advice for urban survival is to familiarize oneself with the city's layout, including alternative routes that are less likely to be congested. This knowledge can prove invaluable when main thoroughfares are blocked or unsafe, Additionally, understanding the location and operation hours of essential services, such as hospitals, police stations, and emergency shelters within these urban landscapes can provide a significant advantage. Equally important is the development of situational awareness skills. Being able to quickly assess the environment for potential dangers, identify exit points, and recognize the flow of the crowd can guide decision-making in high-stress situations. This includes knowing when to stay put versus when to evacuate, a crucial judgment call that could determine one's safety. Furthermore, carrying a small emergency kit containing essentials such as water, non-perishable snacks, a basic first aid kit, and a flashlight can sustain an individual until they reach safety. Communication tools such as a charged mobile phone and a portable charger are also vital for staying informed and maintaining contact with loved ones. 
five, vicinity of chemical plants and industrial areas represent significant danger zones, especially in the event of disasters that could lead to the release of hazardous materials. These areas characterized by their complex industrial activities store and utilize chemicals that if released into the environment, pose severe risks to human health and safety. Uh, the potential for such incidents underscores the critical need for residents and businesses in these vicinities to be exceptionally vigilant and well-prepared. The, the risks associated with hazardous materials releases are multifaceted. Not only do they threaten immediate physical harm through exposure, but they also have long-term environmental impacts that could affect the community for years to come. Toxic gases, fires, and explosions can result from accidents within these facilities, making it paramount for nearby populations to understand the specific dangers inherent to their local industrial landscape. Understanding shelter in place orders is an essential component of safety protocols in areas near chemical plants and industrial zones. These orders are issued when evacuation is not safe and it is better for individuals to stay indoors to avoid exposure to toxic substances. Knowing how to effectively seal one's home or workplace against outside air, turning off ventilation systems, and having enough supplies to remain indoors for possibly extended periods are key aspects of shelter in place preparedness. Equally important is being aware of evacuation zones and routes. Authorities often designate specific zones around industrial areas for evacuation in case of a chemical release. Odd familiarity with these zones, along with planned routes of escape and assembly points, can significantly enhance the speed and efficiency of an evacuation should one become necessary. Regular updates from local emergency management offices can provide crucial information about changes in risk levels and required actions. Four, wildfire prone forests in rural areas are increasingly recognized as critical danger zones, especially in light of the acceleration and unpredictability of wildfires. These natural disasters fueled by a combination of climate change effects, such as higher temperatures and prolonged droughts and human activities like land development and forest management practices can ignite with startling speed and move unpredictably across the landscape. The capability of wildfires to rapidly change direction, jump across barriers, and escalate in intensity makes them formidable threats to communities located near forests and rural areas. Creating a defensible space around properties is a strategic approach to mitigating the risk of wildfire damage. This involves managing the vegetation and other materials surrounding a home to reduce the fire's fuel supply and thereby its intensity. Homeowners are advised to clear dead trees, shrubs, and uh, leaves within a certain radius of their homes, typically up to 100 feet or more, depending on local regulations and guidelines. Additionally, choosing fire-resistant plants and materials for landscaping and construction can further enhance a property's resilience against wildfires. Evacuation planning is another critical strategy for residents in wildfire-prone areas. This includes having a clear practice plan that outlines multiple escape routes as wildfires can quickly cut off the primary exit paths. Keeping important documents and emergency supplies in an easily accessible location ensures that residents can leave quickly when an evacuation order is issued. Staying informed about the current wildfire situation through local news, emergency service reports, and community alerts is essential for timely decision-making and evacuation. The unpredictability and rapid spread of wildfires demand that communities and individuals in at-risk areas remain vigilant and prepared. By implementing strategies such as creating defensible space and having a solid evacuation plan, residents can significantly increase their chances of safety and minimize property damage. Ultimately, understanding the, the behavior of wildfires and taking proactive measures to mitigate risks are crucial steps in adapting to and living safely within these naturally beautiful but potentially dangerous environments. Three, near fault lines during earthquakes, the risk of experiencing severe and potentially catastrophic seismic activity significantly increases. Active fault lines are fractures in the Earth's crust along which movement has occurred, making areas in their vicinity particularly susceptible to earthquakes. These geological formations are the epicenters of the Earth's tectonic activity where pressure accumulates over time and is suddenly released, causing the ground to shake. The closer community infrastructure is to these fault lines, the more intense and immediate the impact of an earthquake can be. Buildings, bridges, and roads are at a higher risk of sustaining damage due to the strong shaking and the potential for secondary disasters such as landslides, tsunamis, and aftershocks further exacerbates the danger. Earthquake-proofing homes is a crucial step for residents living near fault lines. 
This process involves retrofitting structures to make them more resistant to seismic forces. Measures include securing heavy furniture and appliances to walls, using flexible pipe fittings to reduce the risk of gas and water leaks, and reinforcing the foundation and structure of the home. Modern building codes in earthquake-prone areas typically incorporate stringent construction standards designed to withstand seismic activity, but older buildings may require significant upgrades. Emergency preparedness is another key aspect of living near fault lines. This entails having a well thought out plan that all household members are familiar with, covering how to safely drop, cover, and hold on during shaking, and where to meet afterwards if an evacuation is necessary. Keeping an emergency kit readily accessible is vital, containing supplies such as water, non-perishable food, first aid items, flashlights, batteries, and an important documents. Additionally, staying informed about the local emergency response plans and participating in community drills can greatly enhance one's ability to respond effectively during an earthquake. Living near fault lines demands a heightened awareness and proactive approach to disaster readiness by earthquake proofing homes and cultivating a comprehensive emergency preparedness strategy. Individuals can significantly mitigate the risks associated with being in such high risk zones. Balancing the beauty and dangers of these regions involves continuous education, preparation, and vigilance. Two Floodplains in times of heavy rainfall are inherently at higher risk for flooding due to their geographical features and proximity to water bodies. A floodplain is an area of land adjacent to a river uh, or stream, which stretches from the banks of its channel to the base of the enclosing valley walls and which experiences flooding during periods of high discharge. These regions are designed by nature to absorb excess water during heavy rainfall events or when snow melt increases river volume significantly. While floodplains serve a critical ecological function, acting as natural water filtration systems and providing rich soil for agriculture, their tendency to flood poses significant risks to human settlements and infrastructure located within them. The, the risk to these areas is compounded by factors such as upstream development, which can increase runoff into rivers, and the changing climate, which has led to more intense and frequent storm events. Consequently, communities in floodplains must be especially vigilant and prepared for the likelihood of flooding. Monitoring weather alerts is crucial for those living in flood-prone areas. Uh, advances in meteorological technology and communication platforms now allow for real-time tracking of storm systems and the issuance of flood warnings. Residents should subscribe to local weather notifications and pay close attention to flood watches and warnings through smartphones, radios, and other accessible means. Understanding the difference between a flood watch flooding is possible and a flood warning flooding is imminent or occurring can make a critical difference in response times. Having an evacuation plan is another essential aspect of living safely in a floodplain. This plan should include predetermined escape routes to higher ground and a list of essentials to take during an evacuation, such as medications, important documents, and basic supplies. Um, it's also wise to have a communication plan in place with family members in case you become separated. Additionally, considering flood insurance and making structural modifications to your home, such as elevating utilities or installing flood barriers, can provide further protection and peace of mind. Reading in floodplains requires a balance between enjoying the benefits these areas offer and being prepared for their inherent risks. By staying informed about potential flood threats and having a robust evacuation plan, residents can protect themselves, their families, and their properties from the dangers of flooding in times of heavy rainfall. One, coastal areas during hurricanes and tsunamis are particularly vulnerable locations due to the heightened risk of storm surges and flooding. Storm surges and abnormal rise in sea level accompanying a storm are often the greatest threat from a hurricane, surpassing even the wind's destructive power. These surges combined with normal tides can lead to significant coastal flooding, especially in low-lying areas. Tsunamis triggered by underwater earthquakes or volcanic eruptions pose a similar threat with waves capable of traveling great distances at high speeds before inundating coastal zones. Both phenomena can lead to devastating impacts on communities, including loss of life, destruction of property, and lasting environmental damage. Understanding the risks specific to coastal areas is crucial for residents and authorities to prepare effectively. This preparation includes closely monitoring weather forecasts and alerts from reliable sources as a hurricane or potential tsunami approaches. Modern meteorological services provide advanced warnings, which can be indispensable in planning and executing evacuation procedures. 
Regarding evacuation, timing and planning are key components for ensuring maximum safety. Local authorities often issue evacuation orders based on the storm's projected impact and adhering to these directives promptly is critical. Delaying evacuation can result in being trapped by rising waters, road closures, or other complications that can arise in deteriorating conditions. Evacuation plans should include knowledge of local evacuation routes and shelters, along with a personal emergency kit ready to go at a moment's notice. This kit should contain essentials such as water, food, medications, important documents, and communication devices. Additionally, individuals living in coastal areas should consider implementing long-term strategies to mitigate risks, such as elevating homes, installing storm shutters, and securing insurance policies that cover flood damage. Communities can also benefit from coastal defense structures like seawalls and improved drainage systems to reduce the impact of storm surges and flooding. In conclusion, whether it's the serene yet, susceptible floodplains, or the beautiful but often battered coastal areas, understanding and preparing for natural disasters in these zones is paramount. By adopting a proactive approach, staying informed, readying evacuation strategies, and investing in both personal and community resilience measures, we can safeguard lives and minimize damage. Our discussion today underlines the importance of not just acknowledging the threats posed by nature, but actively preparing to face them. Uh, now we turn to you, our viewers. What measures have you taken to prepare for natural uh, disasters in your area? Share your insights and strategies in the comments below. Your experiences can greatly benefit others in our community looking for guidance. And if you found this information valuable, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us continue bringing you essential safety tips and updates. Together, we can build a more informed and resilient community.